Hello everyone, welcome back to the 20. This is my 2007 Volkswagen Golf R32 Mark V. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is doing a complete overview of this car. So driving it, what's under the bonnet, everything else you want to know with this car, you're going to see in this video. So let's get straight into it. So let's start off with the front of this car and I just love the grille on this car. It looks so good, especially with the Euro plates that this model has. It just looks, it looks stunning. Um, ignore the yellow headlight there this car's been this car's been in a shop for the past three months so cosmetically it doesn't present the best at the moment but um this is all all to change at the front obviously headlights they're xenons so very very good headlights they're um they're very bright at night so you can see quite a lot with them then obviously you've got the r32 badge at the front moving down you've got this uh whole vent at the bottom there uh pretty much spanning the length of the whole bumper pretty much so it looks really aggressive from the front it's a very aggressive looking car you can tell it's distinctive it's an r32 the front the front end may literally just be from a jetta with a couple of tweaks but um it looks awesome you can tell when an r32 is coming because that front end just looks insane let's move around to the side of my golf r32 where uh you'll notice not an awful much is going on so it looks just like a Mark V Golf from the side. Uh, you've got a little bit of a uh, side skirt down the bottom there, but that is pretty much it. The rest of the side just looks very bland, and uh, <laughs> mine's uh, mine's got a little dent. Our, uh, our cool room door fell onto it, so that needs to get repaired at some point. Um, <clears throat> on my car, you've got these 18-inch Kingsford wheels, I'm pretty sure they're called. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't exactly know the name of the wheels. All I know is that these look much better than the other ones so <laughs> i'm really happy with these stock wheels they look really good mine are gutter ashed so i obviously need to do something about that but i really like how these standard wheels look uh they really suit the car and that's really about it for the side also got chrome mirror caps either side so obviously these ones have seen better days but it still looks really really good so now we can move on to the rear of my golf r32 where I'm sure you'll immediately notice that I have a set of Valio tail lights. So these are pretty rare tail lights. They stopped producing them in 2020. Uh, they're official Valio tail lights, which are the suppliers for a lot of uh, Volkswagen tail lights and other manufacturers. So they they did all the the Jetta tail lights, the Passats from this generation. So yeah, they never they were never officially sold on the R32s, but they're pretty much an OEM product. So they look really really good. They really suit the car. And um, yeah, huge upgrade over the standard lights that come on the R32. Other things to note with my particular car, obviously you've got a racing line badge there. It hasn't got any racing line work done to it just yet, but it is, um, I, I have plans to do a tune on it. Uh, a couple of other things are racing line related. So the badge has already found its way onto the car because I had the badge lying around and it's gonna be a racing line R32. So goes perfectly with my Racing Line Golf R. Moving down, you'll notice a blue tip exhaust system. So this is actually a custom made exhaust system uh, made by Zadtech in Brookvale. So it is a full titanium system, 200 cell cats, no resonators, uh, muffler, and then also a Varac system. So you can open the valves and it will bypass the muffler. So essentially it's a straight pipe and it sounds insane. It's head is down, literally a full exhaust system on this car and um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure you want to hear how it sounds. I'll start it up first with the valves closed, then I'll do another one with the valves open, and believe me, with the valves open, you can hear it from miles away. Exhaust gets absolutely ridiculous with the valves open. I really like the tone of it when the valves are shut. Uh, reminds me a little bit of the Miltec system. Uh, obviously, it's just the downside is because it's a valve system, you hear the valve, um, the valve uh, vibrating a little bit, which is a bit of a shame. But even still, when you're on the move, it doesn't actually sound as bad as obviously when you're stationary and you're revving it. Uh, so yeah, huge thumbs up from the exhaust from me. Uh, I really like it. I only drive it with the valves open as a little party piece. 
it's just too loud otherwise. I suppose I should also mention with this particular Varax system, you can uh, you can open it like 25% increments. So you can have it kind of like half, the valve's half open and then it creates a different tone. Um, so there's a few tone combinations you can create. Uh, obviously just the loudness, but even with the valve shut, it's a, it's a loud exhaust. It's louder than standard. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm absolutely roasting in this heat. It is a very, very warm day and there are no clouds in sight so ugh, i'm getting absolutely destroyed by the sun right now so under the bonnet of the r32 you have the infamous 3.2 liter vr6 so naturally aspirated engine produces 183 kilowatts i believe uh 200 and something newton meters maybe no i think it's 320 newton meters torque sorry my facts are a little a little, uh, <laughs> little non-existent. So, this engine is an absolute gem. Uh, these things are notoriously pretty bulletproof. They're very, very reliable blocks. It's just, it's everything around the engine that goes wrong. So, <laughs> uh, that's, that's disregarding the timing chain. The timing chain is the infamous issue with these engines. The timing chains are known for fa failing pretty early on. Um, and obviously, yeah, mine... Mine was a very cheap car. I bought this car for next to nothing, pretty much. And uh, the reason it was so cheap, obviously, because it had a whole list of issues. So one of which being the timing chain, because this particular car has 303,000 Ks on it now. So this is the highest, highest mileage car I own at the moment. Uh, a few, few, um, few thousand more Ks than the Lexus that I own. So it's it's been it's been far. It's been very, very far, but... Honestly, overall, it's in very, very good shape for the mileage it's done. <laughs> so yeah, I've just got the timing chain done. I completely redid the cooling system because the previous owner mixed coolants and it corroded the whole cooling system. So that all had to be changed. Pretty much everything is new on the cooling system side of things. Uh, it's just got a new oil pump as well. And a couple of other things as well, oil change, all that. Um, DSG fluid change. And uh, yeah, so it's in... A relatively okay state at this moment in time i um yeah look my mechanic said that this is a very like, kind of unhealthy engine so <laughs> it doesn't fill me with much confidence for this car but uh look if it needs a new engine i'm happy to put a new engine i've spent so much money on this car already i've only had it since last july and i think the repair bill on this car has far exceeded anything i've ever put into any other car i've ever owned but i love the r32 the r32 is just the pinnacle for me uh, the Mark V R32, it's just, I, I love it. I love the Mark IV R32s as well, but obtainably speaking, the R32 Mark V is uh, obviously much more obtainable here in Australia. They only brought over 200 Mark IV R32s and I wouldn't pay what people are asking for them because you pretty much get the same out of this. <laughs> so, yeah, and then also, that you can, I think they brought 1,100 Mark V R32s into Australia. So, yeah, they're they're pretty common. Um, but they're still, they're getting rarer and parts are, fi are getting harder to find for them. Obviously they put this engine in a few other Volkswagen models, so like the, uh, Volkswagen Audi group. So like the TT, the Porsche KN came with a 3.6 litre, um, the R30 or no, the, uh, V6 Passats, they came with a 3.2 litre. So there's a lot of variations of the VR6s in various Volkswagen group, uh, products. And yeah, I think the R32 really, uh, it's 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 the last of the kind like this is the last ever v6 golf ever made and it's just it's a completely different experience over the golf r like i love my mark 7 golf r but the r32 just had so much more drama and i just love driving it so much more because it's just so much more dramatic it feels more raw it has the 3.2 liter v6 and i just love it it is a great great car pose we will take a seat inside the r32 and take a look around the interior so Obviously, to greet you, you've got this lovely leather steering wheel with um, perforations on either side. Uh, you've got these AliExpress paddle shifters that I added just because the standard ones are really small and they, they just they don't cut it for me. So these are easier to reach. I don't really like how they look, but I don't like turning and stuff. I can shift gears, which is obviously what I, what I really wanted. R badge right there. Um, I know in some markets it says R32, but in Australia it just says R. So... Not sure what's up with that. Obviously, up here, you've got the instrument cluster. I've got the uh, low option display. The Highline display, obviously, fills both those gaps, which is um, 
yeah, it's a much desired option. Obviously, you can see there, 303,180 kilometers. So, yeah, this car's been far. This car's been very, very far. But, uh, yeah, I mean, steering wheel feels absolutely awesome to hold, especially over the Mark, 4, uh, the Mark, Mark 7 Golf R. Um, it feels so much nicer than the Mark 7 Golf R. The Mark 8 steering wheels, um, they feel a lot better than the Mark 7s as well. So I would comp I would compare this to a Mark 8 steering wheel. It's uh, very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously, moving it here, you've got auto headlights and uh, various other things like that. I really love this silver trim that there is everywhere. It looks really, really nice and it goes very, very well with this car. Moving to the center, I've upgraded the head unit. So this is a RCD 360 Pro head unit. So in China, Volkswagen produced the RCD 330 and RCD 340 as retrofits for Mark V and Mark VI Golfs and uh, some various other Volkswagen products. And uh, obviously the Chinese ripped off their own ripoff, essentially, <laughs> and created the RCD 360 Pro, which is this, and it has Apple CarPlay, uh, the whole, the whole layout is pretty much just Volkswagen's OS, so it all works as an OEM unit, which is really, really good. It helps to drastically modernize the interior. So sitting in here, you would think you're only in a 10-year-old car. Well, in my mind, it's a 10-year-old car. In reality, this is a much, much older car, approaching, approaching 20 years old, which is pretty scary to think about. Beneath that, you've got your heated seats as well. So in Australia, we only got the leather seats. I know overseas, you can get cloth interiors on these but i really like the seats as well they've got a little r logo embossed in the headrest which is really really nice um but moving down obviously you've got your aircon controls then you've got a little little storage area there with 12 volt socket you've got your esp button there you've got your tire pressure set button there then underneath that you've got your obviously mine's a six speed dsg so first gen dsg uh so yeah, we all know how that's going to end one day. It's been a really, really good gearbox. It's actually had a gearbox replacement. I think it just needs a mech unit because sometimes the, the shifts are a little sluggish and um, yeah, it just has a couple of little quirks, but it's a first gen DSG, so it's very jolty off the line. In slow speed situations, this car can be quite annoying to drive, I'd, I'd say, because uh, you're just there and it's like that the whole time. But yeah, first gen DSG, good gearbox, uh, very quick shifts. Um, all works. It it just works. It doesn't it doesn't work well. It just works. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stick with that. Other than that, the car is fitted with a sunroof, which is bad news because Mark Fives are notorious for having clogged sunroof drains, and that is exactly what's happened to my car. So I've had mold in this car. I've had water in this car. It smells like mildew in here. It's uh, it's not very great. And why is someone's pulling in behind me? Why? Because yeah, apart from that, um, yes, yeah, so it's a comfortable. Uh, they're like semi buckets, so they're very supportive around corners. They're very comfortable seats, so I would be more than happy taking this on a road trip, which is the plan. I'm I'm meant to be taking this to F1 in March, but look, I honestly don't know given the uh, reliability issues I've had with this car so far. I don't know how confident I would be taking it to Melbourne, but we'll we'll have to see when the time comes. Uh, rear legroom, obviously with my seating position, it's not brilliant, but yeah, the rear seats are equally as comfortable. And, uh, yeah, the door cards are also known for having some, uh, quality defects, but it's, again, may I remind you, it's a 303,000 kilometer car. Obviously the interior isn't going to be in A1 condition. It's been used. It, it's like, yeah, it's just been, it's been used. All right. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the uh, the car. Let's uh, let's go drive it because I'm itching to. Before we drive it, I think it's also worth mentioning that this car is sitting lower than a standard R32, and that is because it is on Bilstein shocks, and I'm pretty sure they're GTI springs. So I'm not sure what the previous owner of this car was thinking with this setup. It's a very bizarre setup. Like I don't understand why you'd put GTI springs. Uh, with Bilstein shocks, but anyway, it's sitting lower. That's all that matters. So. Yeah, let's go take it for a drive. So you join me for round two of filming this damn review. The first time I did it, my camera overheated and I filmed the whole review and it didn't record anything. So, I've got the aircon on full blast. It shows how hot it is. My bloody camera's overheating. So, um, anyway, we're going to start this off. Windows up, valve shut, car in automatic. So, let's, uh, let's get straight into it. Actually, I'll, I'll, turn this, I'll turn this down a little bit just so it's not like all blowy over the microphone. 
driving it. Obviously, it's on its Bilstein shocks and GTI springs, and it's very comfortable. It doesn't feel too bumpy, and I've got complete confidence that my camera is not going to fall off its setup today um, because the, the ride quality is very smooth, and um, it's still got a lot of cornering capability. Uh, obviously, it's a V6, it's a front engine, so it's quite heavy around corners, but it's still very manageable. It's not quite as direct as the newer GTIs, newer Rs, but um, you can definitely feel the weight in this car. You can definitely feel the weight. And uh, look, obviously you can you can hear it, the exhaust, it, it isn't too intrusive. With windows up, obviously valves shut. It's like it's untouched, it's like it's unmodified. There's no droning um, on the motorway, I think. If you get up to about 2500 RPM and you're cruising like that the whole way, there's going to be a bit of drone. But what I'm going to do now, put the windows down, put a straight, let's drop a couple of gears. trying to sleep one night and I was in the car that this exhaust was previously on valves open maybe 2000 rpm she lives up this massive hill and I was cruising along the main road and she goes and messages me and she's like oh did you just drive past and I'm like yeah but I'm on like the main straight and she's like I don't know like she's two kilometers away and or maybe two kilometers 1.5 I don't know anyway she was a fair distance away obviously you wouldn't ordinarily be able to hear a car come past but because this exhaust is just that loud she was able to hear it just like it was up the street like so yeah it's a ridiculous ridiculous exhaust and honestly on the subject of the um the old r32 so my mate a good friend of mine really good friend of mine he lent me his r32 it was a three-door blue mark 5 r32 it was absolutely stunning it had cream interior really really nice car um so he lent it to me for 11 months in the end and i essentially just took it to get things done like the front bumper needed to get repaired there was a fender that needed to get repaired um exhaust got made it cut it had a magna flow system the magna flow system was garbage don't buy a magna flow system i really didn't like the noise that car made but um yeah so the owner went to zadtech in brookvale obviously and got the um this exhaust made up and then obviously when that car got sold uh i got in contact with the guy who bought it and um bought it back so now it's on my r32 and um yeah it's a brilliant exhaust but i can't spend the whole video just talking about the exhaust so how do i find it to drive well it's an r32 obviously you're expecting a lot out of this car and uh it delivers a lot obviously like i mentioned it's very very heavy around the corners so cornering at speed it's uh it's stable but it's heavy like you feel you feel the weight you definitely feel the weight but um it's very very enjoyable it corners very well uh, especially with this um this current uh, suspension setup setup uh, it feels really really good around the corners but uh yeah look the r32 for me personally it's always been a bucket list car for me i've wanted to own one of these cars since i was 10 years old 
I used to watch a YouTuber all the time who had a three-door blue R32 and um, I was obsessed with that car. I literally, I was like, oh my gosh, like my first car was going to be an R32. I just love these so much. They're such brilliant cars and um, obviously I didn't end up getting one right as my first car but I got this car like two weeks from when I uh, got off my P's so I ticked something off. I ticked something off and then obviously my mate gave me his car while I was on the red, my red P's so I had that car for quite a long time. I took it to school all the time. Everyone was like, what the hell? <laughs> it was pretty funny but um, I suppose you'll be wondering like what, like would I recommend this car? <laughs> The answer is yes. The answer is yes every single time. I don't care what state the R32 is in. Buy it, do it up, make it love. This car is just incredible. It is the last of the last. Like Volkswagen will never ever make another V6 Golf. This was the last ever V6 they will put in a Golf. Because now they're moving into electric stuff and no one cares about electric stuff. It's so boring. Like you don't get, you don't get this. You don't get that of an electric car. So, yeah, no, this really is the last of the last and it's so significant to me for that because it's just, it's really the end of the era and personally I find the Mark V Golf is the most iconic Golf. When you're thinking Golf, you think Mark V because I think the Mark V is really where Volkswagen stood up a level and they really, they actually tried to make this car really, really luxury. Like obviously you've got leather pretty much everywhere, soft, soft touch materials pretty much everywhere, the seats are comfortable. It feels like a budget luxury car. It's a very nice Cayman GT4 RS, but um, yeah, no, it's very comfortable. I will knock some points off for the sound system. The standard sound system in this car is horrendous. I have heard better Toyotas from the 80s, like sound system. Like this is a ridiculously terrible sound system. It might be because it's water damaged from the sunroof drains being blocked. I don't know. I just know it sounds terrible. Um, but yeah, upgrade the sound system. You won't have a drama. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna buy an R32, I'd look out for the timing chain. I'd make sure the DSG has been well maintained because these things go through, um, they go through mechatronics, they go through DSG clutches, they, they go through gearboxes, like seriously. These cars, I think it's just that, yeah, the first gen DSG is not known for being particularly reliable. So yeah, I mean, my closing thoughts on this car are, any, anyone, literally anyone, if you want to buy a car to track, modify, R32's for you, you can do turbo kits, you can do gearbox swaps, like you can obviously get this as a manual, if you want to get it as a manual, you can get it as a manual, like there's so much that can be done with an R32 and if you just want a daily driver, which you can occasionally just enjoy on the weekends and you're not, never ever going to get bored of driving it, R32, perfect solution, I would take this over my Golf R any day of the week, I've got a Mark 7 Golf R and that's really got nothing on the R32, the R32 has just provided so much more enjoyment for me, personally. Like, the, the Golf R is fast, yeah, I'll give it that. It's got the speed, but the R32 has got the sound and the emotion and everything else that goes with it. And for that, I just, I love this car. I, I could recommend it to anyone. Like, literally, I want you right now, go on Marketplace, go on car sales, go find yourself an R32, treat yourself, splurge some cash, spend a bit in maintenance, you'll be all set. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much from that's pretty much it from me, so I will see you in the next video where I don't know what I'll be reviewing, but uh, if you want me to review your car, leave a comment, DM me on Instagram, 20 Dilf. always happy to review anything, so uh, yeah, that'll be it for the video, so I'll catch you later.